What's up, team? Welcome back to episode two of Big Nick, Big Leadership, because the world needs leaders. Thank you for tuning in. If anybody is tuning in, let's take a look quickly at the stream here. Looks good uh, so far. Everything is is happening. Oh, someone is on there. Fantastic. Um, Anyway, so just wanted to say that uh, for all those who watched last week or who tuned in, it was uh, was a pleasure hosting the first live stream ever. Um, Just a quick note that uh, if you are tuning in, uh, to Big Nick, Big Leadership. Just a reminder to subscribe to our Facebook page as well as to our YouTube page. Uh, that way you can stay notified of all the updates. Click that little bell. Whenever I go live, uh, you'll be able to see what uh, is going on and uh, really exciting stuff happening here. So uh, I think last week's video was a bit of a rocky start and uh, thanks for sticking with me if you were here for that. Uh, But this week we are hoping to definitely take it up to another level. Um, And uh, let's start with what I like to call a title page. Can you believe that? Taking it up a notch. This week we're going to be talking about what's called It's Lonely at the Top. Okay. Uh, hi, Daniela. Thanks for tuning in. She says, hey, handsome. So that's that's really nice. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good to have the uh, family wife support. Appreciate it. Um, okay. Well, it's, uh, it's me and Daniela, so we'll have a conversation here. Uh, if anybody else joins in, thanks. Welcome to the stream, and uh, let's have some fun. So um, we're talking about it's lonely at the top. What, what does that even mean? Um, so... What we're going to talk about tonight, being a leader, okay, is one of the things that struck me as, uh, as, as, as a leader in a new leading position was that I was changing the dynamic of how I received and gave feedback. Um, one of the things that I noticed most, m- most early on was that there's no one to tell you whether you're doing a good job as a leader or not because the people that you're leading, they depend on you. The people that are, you know, uh, leading you or perhaps are in charge of you probably put you in that position so that it takes stress off of them. It allows them to, to worry about whatever it is they have to worry about. So when you put into a higher level position, the feedback loop, the, the chance for you to know, am I doing a good job or not? is something that uh, you know can go away. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges for leaders. So that's why we titled this episode, It's Lonely at the Top. So it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. There are things that we can do to, to help ourselves get through uh, the, the leadership hump and start to recognize our own successes. And that's what this, this is going to be all about. So uh, let me just jump ahead right away to what I like to call the uh, presentation of the day. It's going to be right in there. If anybody has questions while you're watching, feel free to jump in and, uh, and post in the comments. As well, if you're not watching this live and you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook later, then uh, if you have a question, you can always reach out to me in the chat. You you can send me a Facebook message. You can send me an email, uh, and all of that is easily done through either YouTube or through Facebook. So, let's get right into it today, shall we? Uh, we are going to. I'm just going to minimize the chat here so that I can see what I'm doing. Whoop! That's going to be smaller. This has to be smaller. There we go. And we still have the comment section. Okay, there we go. And uh, I'm going to keep, hold on, just give me a sec here. We're doing 10 things at once, multitasking, leadership, multitask, can't see the chat. Hold on a second here. Still going small. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Now I can see everything. Okay. So what we're talking about today is lonely at the top. Why is it lonely at the top as a leader? Well, first of all, it says being a leader means that you are the one in front, Right. So if someone has to go to the top, someone has to reach the summit, you're the one going there first because you have to show other people how to do it. You're paving the way, which means you're kind of out in the front. You're doing it on your own. And there's no one sort of right beside you saying, hey, good job. You got to do it yourself. Number two, being a leader means you're the first one to go in. That's kind of what I just said. But if there is a conflict situation, if there is something that requires, you know, problem solving, you're probably the one going in there to do that. Okay. Being a leader also means you're the last one to leave. I'm experiencing this currently in in a role that I'm I'm developing right now, um, in in which uh, there are different crews and those crews are doing different things. 
And so I have to make sure that I'm actually there before all the crews, but I have to get all the other crews set up and out before my crew can go, uh, which means that, you know, I'm taking on additional roles in order to make sure that there is success for everybody by the end of the whole thing. Okay. So that's what being a leader is. But unfortunately, if you think about you're the first one in and you're the last one out, well, guess what? There's nobody there sort of telling you, okay, it's time to go home or, hey, you should show up now. You basically have to become your own boss to be an effective leader. And so that can be really challenging for someone, especially someone who's used to taking direction, someone who's used to being in a position where the expectations were clear cut. I think as you also climb up the ladder, you will find that the expectations become a little more fuzzy and you have to develop your own systems to recognize your successes and to learn from your mistakes because the other thing too as a leader we're all going to make mistakes that's what it's all about all right so we're going to jump right into this thing here i call this the window versus the mirror this is one of the first lessons um now this is actually sourced from a book by jim collins um i think that uh this is an excellent book called good to great released in 2001 uh, I highly recommend this book because it is a take on leadership that involves actually using empirical data and showing how different trends in leadership and different companies and different CEOs uh, were able to sort of beat the odds and, you know, m take their company from, well, this is exactly what the title of the book is, from a good company to a great company. What does that mean? You should read the book. Uh, but... One of the things that I took from that book is there is a parable in that book. And this parable has been used in many different ways for many different lessons. But I think this is specifically relevant to leaders. And that is the window versus the mirror. So if we see our friend here who's sitting in his chair looking out the window, what does this parable have to do? Okay, so the parable goes like this. And we'll use it in the context of a CEO. And I actually believe that in the context of the book, they use the CEO from, uh, I think it was... Uh, it was a certain airline and I can't remember it's slipping my mind, but here's the story. Okay. The CEO was interviewed because his company had sustained consistent growth, even through recessions and even through, uh, a, you know, a major downturn in the world economy. And they asked him, what is it that you are doing to recognize your success or what do we, what do you attribute to your success? And so the CEO in his office on one side was a mirror and on the other side was a window and basically this he did to remind himself of this exact parable and the idea is this when things go well you look out the window you reward your team you reward those around you and you say Good job, everybody, because our numbers are getting better. Good job, everybody, because I really noticed everybody was on time this week. Great job, everybody, because uh, you you know we've we've solved that problem with the the packaging and we are now you know at a different level of, of excellence. So when your company is is doing the right things and the numbers are are trending in the right direction, you look out to reward other people. So. Consequently, when things are not going well, you look in the mirror. And in the mirror, you say, what can I do differently? And this was the point from the CEO uh, running this company at the time. His point was, when things are not going well, I don't start blaming the people around me. I start looking for ways I can get better to assist my team and give them the resources they need because when we all succeed, when they succeed, we all succeed. What a great story. However, that applies to how you see everybody else. So who's going to do that for you? That's the thing. When you're in a position of leadership, there probably, there might not be more times than not. I bet you, you're going to get feedback a lot less because you're now in the trusted zone. You're in the inner circle. People believe that you know what you're doing. That doesn't mean that we're not still learning. It doesn't mean we're not still growing. And so this is the first tool I want to give you, the window and the mirror. When things are going well, look out the window and look at what your team is doing. And when things are not going well, that doesn't mean you blame yourself for everything. It just means let's take a moment to reflect on the possible ways that we could turn this situation around and how can I be a part of that. I think more often than not, if you take time to ask yourself, what could I do differently? 
I think you will oftentimes find an answer. And that's really interesting because we like to, when things go wrong, we like to look for something to blame. But what if it's not about blaming, but about learning, right? So I want to help you with something. This is another tool for when you're at the top, when you're the boss, when you're the leader, when you're in charge. I want to give you a tool for new leaders. And I call this tool the brain dump. Why are we doing the brain dump? Because it creates a feedback loop for yourself. It's so important as a new leader to start learning to say to yourself, how can I do better? Because like I've said 50 times already, maybe nobody's going to tell you. Okay, so here's the thing. The brain dump. Okay, again, this isn't my own invention. This is something I've taken from many leaders. In fact, I think you'll find that most successful people have very successful habits. This is one of the habits that you want to build as a leader to help you stay sharp when you're at the top and nobody's telling you whether or not you're doing a great job. Okay, brain dump goes like this. At the end of your day, before you go home, schedule a time, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, Maybe as you get better at this, could be a five-minute exercise. At the beginning, I would say give yourself 20 minutes to half an hour. Uh, when I had a team of leaders um, in my previous career, that was one of the main things I stressed. I said, you put this into your personal schedule and you do not miss the brain dump. It's very important. Okay, what is the brain dump? Basically, you take this time to just let whatever's in your head come out. Uh, I suggest writing on a piece of paper. Maybe you want to use your laptop. Maybe you have a tablet. Whatever it is you want to use. But the point is you need to take what's in here, get it out of here, and put it somewhere so that you can reflect back on it. Okay. A couple guiding points, which you can see in the slide here. What went well today? Taking time to actually say, what went well? What am I grateful for? What successes did I achieve today or did my team achieve today right look out the window um, because you actually find that even in a rough day there are probably some things that went really well so you don't want to go home feeling like man that sucked today that was a rough day <laughs> you're gonna have those everyone does right but you still want to go home with a positive attitude and how do you do that get it out of here and get it onto paper where you can action it as soon as possible uh, also what could be improved i think that's really easy for people to do is is look at what happened and say oh, how can i make that different cool right um but you know i think that everybody encounters throughout their day parts of their day that they wish would have gone differently. And I, this happens to everybody, right? So what if you actually could take five minutes and say, what could I have done differently there? Or what lesson did I learn from that? Write it down so that the next time you encounter that situation, or if it's an unresolved matter, you now have the ability to tackle that issue the next time you come into work, which is probably tomorrow, right? <laughs> you know. Um, and then the next thing is what needs to be done tomorrow? This was something really important for me. I always felt like I had to get what was in my head onto paper. I started using my smartphone. So uh, using that like list app uh, on your smartphone, I find is very effective during my day. But at the end of my day, I like to take what's there and I like to put it on my to-do list. I like to put it on, on something, uh, paper. I like to write. I mean, there's lots of people out there who don't like to write. They want to use electronics, fine. Whatever works for you, whatever system is going to work for you, use it, but use it daily. Because the last thing you want is to go home and be stressing about work or going to bed and you can't sleep because the stuff is in your head or waking up the next day and saying, what is it I had to do tomorrow and then now or today and now you've forgotten, right? So really important. The brain dump is just a tool. You know, maybe you're saying that's, hey, that's pretty straightforward. It sure is. But I can tell you that it's saved me a lot of headaches. OK, um, goal number one with the brain dump, as it says in the slide here, don't bring work home. So, again, as a leader, you're at the top. No one's telling you whether you're doing a great job or not. You go home and you want to maybe tell the story to your spouse or your significant other or your friends or whatever. And they're going to have a very outside opinion of what's going on. What you are also looking for, though, is is someone in my organization going to recognize my successes or my failures? And again, the sad news is as a leader, we tend to get, 
trusted, which that's a good thing. But the sad part is when we're trusted in that way, we don't tend to get the same feedback that we did when we were an employee because uh, the employee uh, is learning a lot, you know, and, and is not sort of now in charge of other things. So that level of trust can also mean sort of a level of disengagement from your superiors. Whether you think it's a good thing or you don't think it's a good thing, either way, uh, chances are you're getting less feedback as a manager or as a leader. Um, so, you know, coming home with that worry is something I, I strongly recommend against. You want to get it out of your head, get it on paper before you leave, okay? Goal number two of the brain dump, reward yourself for things that are going well. We don't take enough time to sit down and say, what did I do well today? Because I guarantee you there was stuff that you did well. You just probably got it lost with the rest of the stuff, okay? Um, and then goal number three is stay honest. Stay hungry. That's why you make a to-do list. Because when you evaluate what could I have done differently or what could I have done better, you now have a point to grow. You now have something that you can look forward to, right? So that's part of the brain dump is is staying motivated for the next day okay so now let's take for a second we we the premise of today's episode is that it's lonely at the top because you're out there and you're doing your own thing but what you want is to actually bring other people closer to you right it's not lonely if you know that your team is with you it's not lonely if you know that you're pulling you're pulling the weight or the the you know you're pulling the work but you got people right with you and they would do everything they can to help you. How do you do that? Well, you have to make your expectations clear. That's going to be a whole other show about setting expectations. But today we're going to talk about the feedback loop, gaining influence through communication. Okay. I wanted to take a minute because it's lonely at the top and you don't want to push people further away. One of the mistakes we make as a manager, as a leader is that we use this uh, system that you see on the slide here. We call this system, I call it the poop sandwich, okay? There are other words for poop, but the point is um, when you are giving feedback to somebody and you lead in with the, po the compliment, then something constructive in the middle, and then the compliment at the end, this formula, which has been used in all kinds of organizations and is just so formulaic that people will start to tune out to this now does that mean that you shouldn't use this no absolutely listen you can't just get in there and rip people apart because that also is not going to work the the poop sandwich or perhaps you want to call it the sandwich technique or the sandwich coaching technique or the uh you know whatever but you notice when you look at the sandwich here okay that most of the stuff is in the sandwich as in the bread is not usually the exciting part and when you're saying this to somebody what do you think they are getting from this are they hearing the good part and the good part or are they gonna listen to the constructive part right they're gonna listen to what they did wrong and a lot of times if you have those veteran employees they're probably gonna be like just get to the point so I want to point out to you that if you want to build influence through communication, you can't just go directly to the to the poop sandwich, okay? And I mean by poop sandwich as in you're going to give them a compliment. Example, hey, John, great job today on, uh, you know, stacking that paper. By the way, and then brrr, list all the things that John did wrong. But hey, man, you keep it up. Like, <laughs> he's walking away going... Why didn't you just tell me what you wanted? Why did you try to butter me up with this and then rip me down? So we can always point out people's uh, faults. But I just want to say nobody likes a shit. Oops, poop sandwich. Okay. Uh, it's okay. There's no kids watching the show, right? It's not made for kids. But anyway, point is the, uh, the people catch on to this. If this is the technique that you're using on a regular basis because you're afraid to sell, tell someone the, you know, the truth um, about their performance or if you're avoiding confrontation, or if you're using this as a way to just sort of try to keep people on board, um, people see through it pretty quickly, especially if the compliment and the compliment are kind of disingenuous. They're not really actual compliments. They're more, you know, you're, you're throwing two things on there to try to just sort of 
squeeze the poop in there. Um, it, it, it really doesn't work. People are smarter than that. So as a leader, I'm just going to say here are some alternatives to the poop sandwich. If you're trying to build influence, if you're trying not to be alone at the top, you're trying to bring people in with you, one of the things I suggest, try this, okay? Number one, all positive feedback. Imagine going to your employee or your uh, coworker or whoever it is you're dealing with and you say, hey, Susie, I really like that report you did. Thanks so much for doing that. Susie's probably, I guarantee you this, Susie is probably going to go, but what? Is there something else coming? And you say, no, that's, I just wanted to just tell you that. How do you think that's going to make Susie feel? Does that mean you don't have constructive things for Susie? It does not. Maybe Susie needs to work on X, Y, and Z. But what you've done today is you have set Susie up here. You made her feel good. And so when you do that, the next time you want to come in and say something, Susie is probably more interested in listening to what you have to say. This is a technique that I, I suggest that you, you mix in there, okay? Just saying good things to people. People don't hear enough good things. You would be surprised. I have seen many different workplaces in the last several months. And in those different workplaces, consulting or doing different things, it's amazing how many times we can easily point out what someone's doing wrong, but we don't take two minutes to tell people what they're doing right. This applies to how you treat the people around you as well as how you treat yourself. So again, if you're at the top, take a minute to say with the brain dump at the end of your day, what went well today? What should I celebrate? Because there's probably something that you did right. I bet you there is. Here's another alternative to the poop sandwich. Direct and transparent feedback, okay? So for example, <clears throat> and by the way, when you do this, I, I highly recommend that you do this in private. I don't think that if you have to correct someone's behavior as a leader, you, you're gonna have to do that. I mean, not every employee is always gonna do exactly what you ask them to do. It's just not human nature. It just doesn't happen that way. So being direct and, and transparent, as in, uh, here's a, a good example of, you know, saying to someone, okay, hey, uh, okay, Chris, um, you know, come have a seat and listen, to, listen, I just want to talk really quick about the, you know, what happened the other day. Um, I just want to clearly say the expectation is that you need to show up on time. I know you're aware of that, but listen, I'm telling you this because I don't want this issue to escalate. I think that you're a great employee and, uh, and, I, and I believe that it was an honest mistake, but just don't let it happen again. Right, <clears throat> leveling with someone, honest, transparent communication. That can be an alternative to the poop sandwich. Imagine you sit down, you know, sit an employee down, and you say, "Hey, uh, let me start by saying, you know, I I'm really happy that you wear your uniform every day. But you have to show up on time, and what happened last week was unacceptable. You can do it, right? It has this disingenuous feel. It feels like you were setting them up for the, and then the poop came right away." Okay, so rather than that, just get to the poop. Okay, but be honest about it. You know, in my example, I think it was Chris, I said, you know, Chris, look, you're a great employee. I don't have an issue with you. I just want to make sure that you understand how important it is that we're on time. And Chris, I think will appreciate the honesty and the transparency and the genuineness. Next one I said is a candid personal meeting. So this is kind of the same thing. I really don't, I, I, I would strongly advise against you reprimanding people in public. It's just, it's degrading. It brings their confidence down. It makes them less likely to communicate openly with you later on. Uh, it, it destroys trust. And remember, if you're already lonely at the top, sort of tearing down the people around you is probably another way to keep yourself lonely at the top, okay? If you want to build influence, you need to bring people closer. And to do that, you need honesty. You need transparency. They need to trust you, okay? Remember from lesson number one, if you haven't watched lesson one, go back to our episode, lesson whatever, episode one where we talked about a boss versus a leader um, and that you can be any type of leader or boss that you wanna be as long as you're consistent. It's the same thing with your communication. If you're trying to bring people into your inner circle, you gotta make sure that you're doing that in an honest way and a genuine way because people can see the BS. They can see the poop sandwich coming and nobody likes that, right? Okay. My last little point on this one is remember what it's like to climb the mountain. Remember what you felt like when people told you that you did a good job. 
do you remember the last time someone told you you did a good job when you're you know when you started out and you were training and someone's like oh yeah good you got that oh really well done okay that was excellent right and how it built your confidence up well here's something that i've noticed with a lot of companies and if you're you know you, you fall into this maybe this is the lesson that you can take away maybe this is what you take away from today is that in the beginning we tend to pay a ton of attention to our employees right because they're being trained so they need all the attention they need all the feedback then they get to a level you know let's call it sort of a, a mid-tier of competency right and at that stage we actually tend to go more hands-off why because we trust them and because we go ah I can go focus my attention on the new people, right? Then you go up a level where they've chosen you now as a leader. And so there's probably another learning curve, but then following that fairly short learning curve, because you already knew what you were doing in the first place. Guess what? They leave you alone again. I think this is a big mistake that companies make and, and leaders make is that those two phases where you start taking your hands away, you start you start going hands off on your employees, that's the time where they actually want more feedback because they feel like they're actually seeking out their own level of growth. They're actually putting effort into changing things and making things better and they want people to notice. Uh, they're probably doing it for their own self-interest and because they believe things need to get better. But at the same time, they're also doing it because they want to know that the company is seeing all the good things they're doing. And when do you think we pay most attention to people? We, are, <laughs> we pay most attention when maybe they're really, really good, like they're outstanding and that sort of gets attention. Or they're really, really bad and they're struggling. Those are the type of employees that get all the attention. What about those people in the middle? What if you fall in the middle? Or what if you're a leader and you're doing a good job? You're probably not getting any attention. So you have to learn to attend to yourself. And this is what I'm trying to get at in, the, in this, this presentation. Hopefully it's, it's sticking. All right. Good. I want to leave you with this today. I want to leave you with character of a leader. And that is something that I actually saw written on the wall of a school. When I was at a school, I was doing a workshop uh, at the time. And I remember sitting in the gym. I was all ready to go and the classes hadn't arrived yet. And then I looked up on the gym wall and the, you know, painted on the, the wall, it said this, this, this quote here. True character is doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Now let that sink in for a second, because when you're being watched, are you going to do the right thing? Are you going to follow the protocols? Yeah, of course you are, right? Because you're being actually watched and evaluated, you know? Now, what if nobody was watching? Would you still follow the protocols? So... I'll give you an example of this. I uh, used to work in a gym. Maybe you, you've recognized me from there before. And we used to have a policy of, of not wearing your socks in the gym. Or at least you couldn't wear your socks on the equipment. So you could, you could see the level of engagement from the employees because there were some that just never wore socks because they just felt, you know what, it's easier just to avoid that whole issue you had the people that would follow the policy and then you had people that would follow the policy when you were watching them but when you weren't watching them they wouldn't follow the policy so do you select those people as leaders you have to be careful right and if you're a leader remember you're now in a position where they trust you the company trusts you your supervisors trust you your the people that put you in that leadership role they trust you right so if those people um are trusting you then you have to think about do they need to be watching me all the time is this something that um you know am i only going to do the right thing when they're watching me or am i going to set the example and am i going to hold everybody else to that standard so it might be lonely at the top right? You might be all by yourself and not getting the feedback and, and you have to sort of decide for yourself, am I doing a good job? Have I, what can I learn? What can I do better? But at the same time, whether someone is telling you you're doing a good job or not, 
is irrelevant to you making sure that you're doing the best job you can and that you're upholding the standard. If you don't agree with the standard, then I'm sure that in the company that you're in, there are protocols by which you can you can go and deal with that. Uh, but definitely, as a leader, true character is making sure that when you are being watched equally as when you're not being watched, that you're upholding the highest possible standard, not only for your team, but for the people around you, right? Good. So where are we at? Hey, we're at the 30 minute mark and we've gone up to four people. This is so exciting. So uh, <laughs> okay, thanks for joining in uh, today. And uh, let's make this bigger here. Can I see this? There we go. There it is. Okay, let's see. Take a minute or two. Let's see here. Okay, over in the comments. Does anybody have any questions before we sign this thing off? Because uh, basically that is it. Let's do a quick summary. The summary is that uh, when you're a leader, you tend to get less feedback than you normally would. So it's important for you to set up systems to recognize your own excellence as well as your own lessons and things that you can do better. Also, so that you stop being lonely at the top, you want to make sure that you are using effective communication to pull your team closer and gain additional influence. And you want to avoid the poop sandwich because the poop sandwich is the go-to technique for everybody. And let's face it, everyone can see a poop sandwich coming a mile away. So we suggested some alternatives like just being positive, just being clear and transparent, having a meeting off to the side, um, and there's many other things. So uh, it seems that no one has any questions, so this is good. We are probably going to end it there. Uh, thanks for everyone who tuned in. Really appreciate the support. And remember, everybody, we'll just flash this out one more time. Uh, here it comes. Remember to sign. Whoop, yeah. Remember to subscribe on YouTube and hit that little bell to stay notified of future videos. Uh, you can sign up. You can follow us on Facebook. Uh, and uh, yeah, at Big Nick Big Leadership. Just remember that uh, you are part of something big here, and we appreciate your time. Because uh, for everybody, remember that the world needs leaders, and I appreciate your help. And I appreciate your time. So I hope you have yourselves a great evening. And uh, if you didn't catch the video live, you can feel free to share this one on Facebook another time. Uh-oh, maybe there's a comment. Hold on. Is there a comment? There's, oh, there you go. Hey, Mike, thank you. And uh, thank you, Daniela, for, <laughs> for supporting me. Woo, awesome. Okay, guys. Oh, I'm giving those likes. Giving those likes right now. All right, awesome. Thanks for tuning in, my friends. And that is the end of another episode. We will see you next time for another episode of Big Nick, Big Leadership, because the world needs leaders.